Hi, everyone. Tom Crager with The Bootleg, a Tennessean's live high school football show presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. Episode 2, Season 2, On Tap. I'm Tom Crager, high school sports editor at the Tennessean. Brought in my special guest, Maurice Fitzgerald, Hillsborough football coach, Metro Nashville coaching legend. Coach, thanks for joining the show. Thank you. Uh, we've got a lot to talk about. We've also got uh, – we have Cecil Joyce of the Daily News Journal in here to help pick the top ten games this week. So let's get right into it. Uh, Coach, um, yes, sir. it's game week. Yeah, they come around real <laughs> fast. They really do. You are – you know, you have an extra day before your Saturday game. We'll talk about that classic in a, in a, in a minute. But how does an extra day help you guys? <clears throat> well, we look at it as being positive. But if you look at it on the other end, we have one less day the next week. <laughs> so, uh, it's fun. You'll get to, you know, maybe go on a Friday night to look at some other teams play and see mm-hmm. how things go. But you do have an extra day in that regard. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you think about your team this year? Well, they're young, and you hear that as an old cliche, they're young, but we really are. And uh, I was just kind of laughing because we really lost like 15 starters on defense, and I really didn't think about it until I saw those young guys out there. But on the other hand, one day they'll grow up, and then they're mm-hmm. going to be the older guys. The good thing offensively, you have some experience back, and I guess it starts uh, up front, but then also Brian, uh, Brian Covington, uh, the running back. Yeah, always starts with offensive line or mm-hmm. defensive line. So we're we're very very pleased to have a, a, a kind of a veteran offensive line, if you will. Mm-hmm. And Brian Covington in the backfield uh, is going to give us an added boost. Uh, we have a quarterback, uh, Jalen Macon, that that started last year, started mm-hmm. twelve games. So that gives us a big plus in in that position, at quarterback. Where are you guys practicing with all the construction going on? Do, do you have a place there on campus, or you have to go off campus? Well. Fortunately, we are on campus where we practice on the baseball field, but getting there sometimes is uh, it's an issue. But uh, we, we, we do practice on the baseball field. The kids have to navigate their way through the construction. But you know what? They're resilient. Um, and uh, our principal, Dr. Pelham, he's done a super job as far as helping us and designing ways that we can get back and forth to practice and so forth. So uh, after a while, you really don't even pay attention, to be honest. Got to talk to you about your Pearl coaching days and specifically uh, when you had John, Big John. Uh, what's, what's your favorite John Henderson story? Oh, I guess there are a lot of them. Uh, I guess the one that comes to me most when uh, one day he came and he said he wanted to play free safety. He didn't want to play defensive line anymore. So uh, we let him run with the defensive backs a while and he got tired. So he came back to defensive end and, you know, the legend grows after that. Big, big classic this weekend, and big and, and, and want to talk a lot about this. This is uh, the Coaches Against Violence Classic. Uh, it's uh, game one is involves you guys, Hillsboro versus Maplewood at three o'clock. All games are at TSU, and then the second game is Cane Ridge versus Pearl Cone. Right. That's going to be start about five thirty. Ten dollars gets you into both games. Uh, no, 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 no. No, is it more? Twelve, twelve dollars oh, oh, pre. Sorry. Twelve dollars <laughs> preseason t- as a pre-ticket okay. sale, and fifteen dollars if you uh, walk up at the gate. So okay. Get your I tickets was, early. I was, I was told wrong today. So twelve, fifteen gets you at the. So uh, yeah, fifteen dollars gets you in, and um, you know why did you all start this? This you were kind of the one of the masterminds, I think, behind this the concept of this classic yeah it's a it's a community-based initiative uh to promote uh non-violence unity fellowship mm-hmm. brotherhood very seldom four teams get together to do anything so mm-hmm. uh four schools that are community-based schools that mm-hmm. that never really have a chance to interact a lot so uh we decided to to do this uh, we had a unity car wash where all the schools mm-hmm. all the four schools came together uh we ate we had fun we laughed uh they learned to appreciate the others a lot of times they don't see these kids always rivals but we were able to do things in a unity in a fellowship where it's not so much competitive that they learn uh, to have dialogue with one another and respect one another where they're from because a lot of times they don't ever see them they just hear things mm-hmm. so uh we have uh we have another open house uh in uh nonviolence uh coach against uh, nonviolence coach against violence uh uh, open house this Thursday at the fairgrounds, which we'll open that uh, with our uh, Scott Wallace. He's provided a, a venue there 
that we'll come out and we'll eat and have kind of a media day there. Mm-hmm. Uh, the kids will be wearing the same kind of uh, T-shirts so we all mm-hmm. look alike. So it's going to be fun. That's this Thursday. What do you hope – what message do you want to get portrayed after this? What, what's your message for this weekend? Our message is that you can come together. These uh, four schools, uh, communities can come together and have a good time, embrace one another, mm-hmm. uh, leave there uh, in a peaceful uh, manner, uh, enjoy the festivities, enjoy the Tennessee State Band, enjoy one another. It's almost like a family atmosphere that we want to create for this this Saturday, along with some good football. Yeah, and, and we were talking, uh, like, last week or so, you know, Hillsboro versus Maplewood, Cane Ridge versus Pearl Cone, all four, I believe, are, are region were, were region champions this year. Yeah, that's, that's, that's kind of unusual. Yeah. Well, uh, we, we didn't plan it that way, but mm-hmm. they are. We all were uh, region champs last year, and this showcases all the communities and all the four teams. So it, it'll be a good day. Mm-hmm. What, uh, you know, and, and we were talking before, there's a lot of TSU connections from the coaches here. Sure. You have uh, out of the four coaches, uh, uh, Coach, you know, Eddie Woods, Coach uh, Sente Broom, and myself, we played at uh, uh, Tennessee State. And Coach Benetti, we won't uh, take it out on him. He played at Austin Peay. Yeah. So we'll just throw that in. Yeah. So, I mean, so that's kind of a good to be back home at TSU. And, um, you know, it's got, it's got to be great for TSU to be able to allow you guys to have this there. Exactly. And also our uh, ADs, uh, James Reese, which was a former coach at Tennessee State, mm-hmm. and our athletic direct, uh, director, uh, Riley Walton, there, um, you know, they're, they're there as far as athletic directors. Uh, From what I saw on your schedule um, this year, you play – I mean, it's good to see, like, everyone, all the Metro teams are playing each other. I think I think you've got Kane Ridge on your schedule. That's, that's I think you've got Pearl on your. It's very on your Hillwood, mm-hmm. uh, Hunters Lane, Glencliff. Uh, we play probably more Metro school teams than anybody. So mm-hmm. we need. It's like the old NIL it used to be, mm-hmm. where we had to play one another. That's good. It's good for the city. You don't have to travel. You know, you can raise money within the city. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and it starts Saturday. Hillsboro versus Maplewood is one of our top ten games. Well. Cecil and I will be making predictions early uh, later on to there. But that's a good – I mean, th- those are two great games for week one of the season, and, and it's really that's a that's a late season non-region game when, when you all are – everyone's used to the season. Sure. Uh, to get these games and get these uh, – all these four teams playing mm-hmm. in one venue, uh, it's just uh, really – we're very excited, uh, mm-hmm. Tennessee State excited. Uh, to have us, uh, Teresa Phillips uh, has done a phenomenal job. Clint Gray, mm-hmm. all those guys have uh, just opened our, their arms, and uh, we're looking forward to, to going there and putting on a show for all the fans. And also, we're talking about Tennessee State Band. Mm-hmm. You know, the risk craft of bands, they'll be participating there at halftime. So. And really, was it easy to get all four coaches in real quick? I mean, did, did, did you have to do some arm twisting? To get it's everybody? not easy to get coaches to do anything, <laughs> you know, to, to agree. And, and that's the unique thing about it. Most time we're kind of off to ourselves and do things, you know, individually. But I think it's kind of brought a different perspective uh, among the coaches. I've seen that as we talked and we had to, you know, collaborate and talk and plan and so forth. So I just saw a different side of, of, of these young men that I hadn't seen before. Long-range goal, is it for this to be an annual event? Yeah, and hopefully that one day it's not these four schools, it's four mm-hmm. more schools mm-hmm. uh, that can carry it on. We're starting it, uh, and hopefully that we can build on it and mm-hmm. ease and other schools will have an opportunity to participate at this uh, mm-hmm. at this classic. Well, Coach, uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, we're, gonna, we're getting ready to bring on Cecil Joyce. Uh, again, it's the Coaches Against Violence Classic. Yes, sir. TSU. Pre-game sale tickets, $12. Correct. <laughs> At the gate, $15. Two great games, great environment. You're going to have the TSU band. We're going to have Cecil Joyce come in and join us now. And, Coach, again, it was great seeing you here. And um, uh, look forward. I'll be there Saturday at the um, – um, I'll be there Saturday at TSU, and uh, it's going to be a great game. Uh, Hillsboro, Maplewood, two great, great teams there, and then the Cane Ridge, Pearl, uh, three o'clock and five thirty. Probably dress a little cool. 
Uh, maybe bring a fan with you because, you know, and maybe hope for no rain, I guess, too. So, uh, uh, great game there. Uh, Cecil, w- welcome to the bootleg. It's great to be here, Tom. Uh, you weren't here last year. I think you, you filled in for me last last year when I went to uh, – Florida on a on a vacation, so I did. We got a lot to talk about before we get to our top ten games. Breaking news today: uh, Dixon County's Trayvon Ripka uh, committed to Kentucky, chose Kentucky over Tennessee, Oregon, and uh, Oklahoma. Of course, he was number three on our dandy dozen defensive tackle uh, at Dixon County. Again, he chooses Kentucky over the Vols, and um, big get for Kentucky. Uh, he's a big uh, six four. 285 uh, defensive tackle, uh, big get there. Uh, that leaves, I believe, if my if if my if I'm right, uh, three kids from our dandy dozen that have not committed. Uh, number one on that list is Reggie Grimes. Um, breaking news out, out this came this last week. He's now eligible for the season. Uh, TLS Blay has ruled him eligible on Friday. Uh, he has restart set his commitment date. Uh, he's going to do it on November 28th, Thanksgiving. He'll have something more to be thankful for. He's going to commit on Thanksgiving Day. And then uh, number six, uh, Devin Curtis from Brentwood Academy. Uh, he's uncommitted. I think he's down to about six schools. And then number 11, Gary Smith the third, out of Shelbyville, a defensive tackle, offensive uh, tackle, uh, probably getting really recruited for defensive line. Uh, in fact, he plays Thursday night at uh, Shelbyville Host Tullahoma. I'll be at that game. Uh, he's also uncommitted. So those are the three off our dandy dozen, to my knowledge, looking on our list uh, that have not committed. So uh, boot. So we're going to go into the top ten games. Again, you're watching the bootleg uh, presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. If you have questions, send me your questions. Uh, you can put it on our Tennessee and Facebook page, or you can send me a message on Twitter at Krager, that's K-R-E-A-G-E-R. Uh, game of the week for week one will be NBA at Brentwood. Uh, kind of a rare game. You don't normally see that game. Uh, you know, a, a D2 AAA power versus a 6A power in Brentwood. Uh, you know, Kay Granzel uh, comes back. Uh, he's, you know, he's, he's an Auburn baseball commitment. Good arm there. Walker Merrill is their star run, uh, wide receiver. He's a junior four-star guy there. Um, you know, and you, I know you know Marty from his Oakland days and, and NBA days before, but uh, what's your thoughts? Well, I got to see NBA play uh, Smyrna in a Jamboree on Friday, a very impressive team. Uh, they aired it out a little more than I thought they would for mm-hmm. a Jamboree. Most teams are conservative. They like mm-hmm. to run the ball. NBA looked really, really tough offensively. They had a couple of long touchdown runs. They threw it a lot. Um, their defense was excellent. They shut out Smyrna in the varsity uh, mm-hmm. two quarters. So, uh, I think NBA is going to be a tough team to beat this year. Okay. Well, I'm going to go uh, in a close game. Brentwood 24, NBA 21. That's my prediction. Uh, Cecil, what you got? Right now I've got – well, I guess I've got Brentwood 24, NBA 20. Ooh, and we have not – he has not seen my predictions, just so you know. Uh, second game, to speak of, Page at Fairview. This is like the battle for 840. A uh, big rivalry game there. Page has won three out of the last five meetings. Page has got Cade Walker, the quarterback back, but he has he needs to find a receiver. Michael Burdick graduated. Uh, you know, he did a little bit of everything for them. And then you've got uh, Fairview. You know, they've had a Mr. Football finalist the last two years. Uh, Logan Nardazzi is, is the running back. He's probably their best chance there. And they've got a punter, uh, I think, that could also get some – a punter kicker that can get some attention for the kicker award. Uh, I'm just going to tell you right now, I'm picking Page 27-21. Uh, I think that's a real interesting non-region rivalry game. Well, if you've got Fairview coming off a 10-win season last year, but a little bit down this year mm-hmm. from what I'm hearing. Um, I've got Page 34, Fairview 14. Ooh. East Nashville at Smyrna. Uh, you saw Smyrna against the NBA. I just, I've seen uh, East Nashville at the Jamboree. I've seen them in 7-on-7. Seven seven. Um, I think this may – this is – I don't think – I know this is Brian Waite's best East Nashville team he's had and one of the – you know, one of the best teams they've had, period, there for, since they've been at uh, the new East Nashville. Not the old, of course, the old East High, but um, I like this East Nashville team in 3A a lot. I got to see them in a passing league, so obviously that's, that's a little different with no yeah. linemen, no pads, but very quick, very athletic. Uh, they throw the ball well, and they run good routes. A uh, very exciting team to watch. I mean, I'm excited to hear, you know, see how they do against Smyrna. Demick, Star, uh, Demick Starling, uh, Tyler Fletcher is going to Western Kentucky. Those are two – 
I think the Starling kid can can flat out play at receiver. He's, he's got he's a he's a really good track uh, athlete. I think he did well last year in the in the uh, uh, state track meet last year. I'm going East Nashville 34, Smyrna 28. I'm going a little opposite, probably a homer pick, but uh, I think Smyrna's front, both offensive and defensive fronts, is where the difference is going to be made in this game. I'm going to go Smyrna 27, East Nashville 19. Okay, of course, they got Dallas Walker, the uh, uh, Texas A&M commitment there, kind of spearheading that defensive line. He's a tight end on offense, is that right? He is. They, they have 600 pounds on their uh, interior tackles on wow. defense. Okay, uh, staying in the borough, Oakland at Hendersonville. This is a rematch from a second-round playoff game a year ago when I think Henderson or Oakland won 28 to nothing. Um, Oakland, this is not your Oakland team from a year ago, though. It's not, but defensively, you can't tell. Uh, they had a really, really uh, stern preseason test. They had uh, Brentwood Academy, they had McCauley, they had Kane Ridge. You know, and they shut out all three of those teams in varsity play. Now, preseason scrimmages don't mean anything. We know that. But when you shut out those three teams in varsity play, you're doing something right defensively. So they look like the same Oakland defensively. Offensively, they lost a lot of weapons from last year. They've also got a running back, uh, Jordan Brown, who's hurt for at least uh, three quarters of the regular season this year. So uh, that might be where the biggest difference comes with Oakland. Um, you, Cody, the Cody Sparks. Scenario. I mean, new quarterback out of moved in from the Indianapolis, Indiana area. Uh, he's like six four, six five, big kid, big arm. How is he? How how is he going to change uh, what Kevin Creasy likes to do on offense? I mean, you're not going to see very much of the traditional wing T. I don't think. And, and you think he's comfortable with that? I think he is. I've spoken to him several times, and he worked a lot during the spring and summer on the wing tee offense. And Coach Creasy has admitted that he's changed his offense a little bit to adhere to what Cody Sparks does well. And Cody is a gunslinger. He's not he's not a multiple threat. I mean, he's a drop-back pro-style quarterback, and he can throw it far and he can throw it hard. And he, he looks accurate so far from what I've seen. And, and while I say they're going to be shotgun, they're still running like a wing tee in a shotgun look for the most Sure, part. sure. I mean, he's not going to be, uh, stray far from the yeah. wing tee, but he's going to put a little more spread into it. Oakland 48, Hendersonville 14, if I'm reading my bad handwriting. I think Oakland wins big. Uh, Hendersonville – Maybe an early score and a late score there. Uh, Oakland, I think, is is one of your top teams uh, in the state, but it's a you know could be a precursor to a, to another playoff game. I think Henderson was going to struggle to score again. I'm going to give him a touchdown. Oakland 31 to seven. Okay. Uh, Williamson County game. Uh, Independence at Summit. So this is a six A versus a five A. Uh, you know, Summit's gone away from the wing tee. They've gone to a spread. They got the two Wade Wade brothers, the the twins. Uh, they've moved. They've moved. Uh, George Odomegwu. I've worked hard on pronouncing that name, George. I hope I got it right. Uh, running back now to receiver. Uh, that's probably his more natural p- position in college. Um, I, I, it's going to be interesting to see what Summit does on offense, and then in, in Independence. You know, they got Ethan Cash, and you know, we talked about uh, uh, the Cody Sparks. You know, he he's a gunslinger. I think Ethan's a gunslinger too. I mean, he'll throw it all over the place. Um, the, the issue is, I think this year, Independence does not have the receivers they had a year ago when they had T.J. Sheffield and they had the Collier kid. Both of them were 1,000-yard uh, receivers. And then you threw in uh, towards toward middle or late in the year, you had uh, Chase Bishop move in. It's Chase and some – you're going to have Chase Bishop there, but you got some other guys that are kind of unproven. I'm not saying they're not talented. They're just – we're waiting to see who steps up and who the next batch of, of receivers at Independence are going to be. Well, one thing that's been clear every year Coach Blades has been at Independence is that they score. They yeah. score a lot of points every year. New crops of kids come in, and they still find a way to have offense. I don't think this year will be any different. I think Bishop's going to have a big year because he's not going to have to spread the ball around as much. You know, I think 1,213 or more 100 yards receiving is not out of the question for him. And you're right, Coach Blade likes to throw it. He likes to throw it a lot. They're going to score points. Uh, everyone, again, if you have any questions, give us – uh, put a, uh, ask the question on Facebook, on the Tennessee and Facebook page, or you can just tweet me at Krager, that's K-R-E-A-G-E-R. You're watching the bootleg presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. Next game, uh, this is kind of an old school game. We, well, we didn't pick the score of the last game. Oh, oh, sorry. I'm picking Summit 24, Indy 21. I'm picking Indy 30, Summit 13. I'm going to tell you, I'm gonna, this is a forewarning. 
if I get this score wrong, I will have a voicemail or an email of someone pointing it out that I picked the, the this. It, it never fails, but I like it. Uh, I think again. I think you this gotta is a take some game. chances sometimes. You got you got you got you got to try one. I think this could be an early season upset. Uh, old school game here, Lebanon at Gallatin. This is like, you know, this is an old like '80s type game here. Um, Lebanon at Gallatin. You know, Chuck Gentry won uh, the the, uh, the coach there at Lebanon. They won eight games in 2018. I think it's the first time since like 2004, 2005 that they've won at least eight games. I think that says speaks volumes for what Lebanon is is on the verge of doing right now. I think uh, Lebanon is itching to get out of that fourth spot in mm-hmm. their region because they want to stop playing Oakland in the first round of the playoffs. Mm-hmm. And I think he's got the team to do that this year. He's done a great job. They've improved each of the years he's been there. And I think 9-10 win season is not out of the question this year. I think they finished third. Ahead of, they got beat by Blackman last year, didn't they? Was it Blackman? Okay. I think it was Blackman. Okay. I think Ross well, was yeah, there. they have to play but, Rutherford County Schools either I way. Think, so. I think the good thing is with them is they could easily – I mean, I think they could contend for a home playoff game. This year, with that Hendersonville Lebanon game, I think will determine who's who's second and who's third on that. Just looking at it, the issue I have with Lebanon is Chandler Kreit, their quarterback from a year ago, who is really talented player. He's now a freshman at Ball State. He's a rece- he's a corner receiver there. Um, that's going to be my question there. And then you, this is game one for the Chad Watson era at Gallatin. I, he did he did score a touchdown against Gallatin starters. I've I've seen that. So. Uh, uh, Gallatin is, is is headed to the right direction, I think. They did, and I think that was 7-7 in the Jamboree against Oakland. So, I, I wasn't there. I didn't even see how it happened, but uh, from what I've read in, on social media, it was a good sustained drive they had. So, that's a good sign. If you can score a touchdown on Oakland anytime, preseason or regular season, that's a good sign. Lebanon 21, Gallatin 17. I have Lebanon 28, Gallatin 20. Close there, aren't we? Uh, the alphabet game, uh, CPA at ECS, that's uh, Christ, Presby- Christ Presbyterian Academy at Evangelical Christian School down in Memphis area. Um, I think this is a very intriguing game because ECS, a lot of people will tell you, uh, if they're not the favorite to, to, to win it uh, in D2AA, they're one of the favorites to get there. And that's uh, they're very talented. I know Jonas Rodriguez, who's now at BGA, who's the other school, you know, the favorite to win it in D two AA. Um, you know, he left a really good team at ECS. Well, I mean, you can't ask for a better test than playing a you know a D two three A team like CPA that's that's as outstanding and talented as they are. Well, D two AA. I mean, double A. Yeah, they're defending state champs. Right. Um, the th- the name to if you're a CPA person you need to look out for this name austin hill he's an army commitment uh, he's a linebacker there they've got to slow him down and the thing with cpa you know last year we knew who the stars were going to be you had kane patterson mm-hmm. you had ryan elledge at quarterback you had uh, noah henderson at receiver you had all these players that were big time players they graduate over 20 some seniors there's so many unknowns, and, and this is the interesting thing with what Engel uh, has at, at CPA. But on the flip side, these guys that we don't know about, they played a lot because they were in so many blowouts last year. You know, they were in enough blowouts when they weren't playing the the uh, some of those some of those. Not, they're not now. Their non-region schedule was tough, but um, you know, they had opportunities with some of their games, some of their non-region games, where they could get some players in. That's got to help them now um, with, with, with what they have. And, of course, when you, when you play 15 games, that's a lot of practice for your, for your, sub, for your subs and your future starters. Well, they've gotten to a point now where, you know, they traditionally plug in new guys now. I mean, every year they graduate a lot of big guys. This may be the biggest, you know, load they've lost in a, quite a few years. So it'll be interesting to see what Coach Martin does with this group. But, I mean, they're, they're like Britwood Academy now and, and, mm-hmm. and Ensworth, some of these other teams. They just plug back in new guys every year. Uh, I'm going to pick CPA 24, ECS 17. This might be my homer pick. Uh, this is my uh, – see if there's another upset there. I think I think ECS probably is the favorite in this game. I've got CPA 26 to 14. All right. We'll, we'll see on there. Uh, and now we've got – those are all the Friday games. We've got three Saturday games to pick. First now, we've talked about it earlier, the Coaches Against Violence Classic there at T- TSU. Um, Hillsboro versus Maplewood. Big – 
just forewarn you, Coach Fitzgerald still in here. So, so let's think about this. If you see something coming my way, it's, he's still <laughs> if you here. See, if he throws his hat, you'll know why. Uh, I think this is a very interesting game there. Uh, Maplewood, man, they graduated so many really good players last year. Bobo Hodges was like a four-year starter at quarterback. They had all of these talented receivers. Uh, they had a great defense there. They graduated so much. Um, but I know Arsente Broom, and I know he's going to be ready for these guys. Uh, it's week one. There's so many unknowns there. Uh, and then Coach uh, Fitzgerald was just telling us how you know their defense is all graduated. Uh, but they got the Covington kid, and I think he's a difference maker. I think if he has the season, he could he could be in conversation to maybe be on a podium at some point this season. If he has the season where I think he could have, um, if, if he stays healthy and everything. So I think – Hillsborough's definitely the, the the favorite. I'm going to say 48 to 20. Well, first of all, I would like to say that the four coaches in this classic are about as good as it comes. Uh, Coach Fitzgerald over here, Coach mm. Broom, Coach Woods, mm. Coach Bernetti. I mean, they don't come much better. Mm. I mean, you talk about four good programs. That's just four great coaches. Yeah. That's why there's it's four good programs. Mm. But I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna say uh, Hillsboro gets shut out badly. No, I'm just kidding, Coach. <laughs> I'm going I'm going Hillsboro 33, Maplewood 16. I think the hat just about came this way. All right, last game in the classic here: Cane Ridge versus Pearl Cone. Man, this is a. I would have loved to have seen this game last year with Pearl. Pearl had so many big time players there, uh, and Cane Ridge had so many with a running attack. But I think this is a brand new look for Cane Ridge. Um, I think you're going to see uh, a lot more passing game. You've seen them, I think, twice. I have. Um, I think the. I really want to see the Adane uh, Mitchell. The kid that moved in out of Texas. I want to see him play because I think he can really be a difference maker. If he's healthy, he's had some some issues in the preseason. There's some injuries that I know he, he got held out of the scrimmage kind of as precautionary because they want to keep him healthy. I want to see what he does. And then, of course, Quentin Barnes, the four-star uh, junior receiver, I want to see what he does. Um, but the Mitchell kid is what I want. I've seen some huddle film on him. I really want to see him play live. Um, I think he could be fun to watch there at Cane Ridge. Uh, from what I gather from Cane Ridge, another good defense, a lot of athletes running around. I, I did get to see uh, him play on mm -hmm. defense a little bit against Oakland. He was held out of the Riverdale game, but I, I'm excited, as you are, about the, the Texas transfer. Their defense is solid. It's hard to run up the middle on them. Uh, I like Cane Ridge. I'm going Cane Ridge by a score of 20 to 12. Okay. I think the, the interesting thing with this Cane Ridge team is they're like a – I think on offense they could be a polar opposite from a year ago. When you have uh, Devon Starling and they have the kid that moved in from Milan last year at running back, you, you can feed the feed the ball and just run the ball all over the place. And then your quarterback, you know, he graduates and your running game graduates. And I think you're, you're going to see um, a lot more passing game there um, – out of out of out of Kane Ridge there, and, and I think Coach Woods, you know, I think he's been really working on the run game because he knows he's got to develop something there. I'm picking Kane Ridge 26, Pearl Cone to tw 21, and finally, the Rankin Bowl. Uh, Saturday night game is where you'll you'll be at Saturday night. Of course, I'll, I'll be, be at the the doubleheader at, at TSU at Hillsboro versus Maplewood and Kane Ridge versus Pearl. I'll be there for that doubleheader on Saturday. You're going to be at Blackman on the new turf. Uh, I'll co at Blackman. Go ahead and break it down for me. Um, two outstanding teams. This, might, this is the game of the week in the state, I believe. Uh, it could be one of the best games in the entire football season. These two teams, I mean, Alco is a 6A team in, in all – you know, intents and purposes. They're 3A, but they look like a 6A team. They have the depth of a 6A team, the talent for sure. Mm -hmm. And they got the best coach in the state. I think arguably a lot of people will say that. I mean, he's mm -hmm. the winningest coach for sure. Mm -hmm. if, if, there's, if the stands aren't packed Saturday night at Blackman, I'm going to wonder what happened, what the heck happened, if the Jonas Brothers came into town suddenly or, or something. But it's going to be a full house at Blackman. The turf is being uh, dedicated to Bart Smith Field. Uh, you've got Rankin back in town. First time Rankin has not only been in Murfreesboro, but played a Murfreesboro team. Mm -hmm. So that alone is uh, going to bring a lot of people that would normally probably not have come to this game. So it's going to be great. Uh, I think we have a difference of, of, of spreads in this game on the, on the yeah. score, though. Yeah. Uh, is there any truth to the rumor? There's a rumor floating around that there will be a Crager bobblehead giveaway at, at the Inferno on on Saturday night. I, I Someone asked, and I've heard the same rumor, it, has the bobblehead shown up? I know Co I know Dr. Justice has been ordered one. 
I have not heard. I cannot confirm that rumor, but I guarantee I will snag you one if, if they are available. If there is a Craig or Bobblehead at, at Blackman, uh, make sure to pick me up one. And uh, score, who do you got? I've got Alcoa edging Blackman 27 to 24. Oh, Cecil. Cecil, Cecil, Cecil. Gary Rankin is coming to Murfreesboro, playing a Murfreesboro team for the first time ever since he left Riverdale. He's never lost to Blackman. He's a four-time state champion. Four time, they won four straight 3A champs. Um, hey, I'm picking Alcoa to win. But you're close, man. Alcoa, 42-21. Uh, the Tornadoes are going to come in, take care of business, and then they're going to go back. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Well, we'll see what happens. Blackman's got a lot of talent. It's hard to beat a team as talented as Blackman by 21 points. I do love Alcoa, and I think Rankin's going to leave there with a W, but okay. I think it's going to be a good game. There is our difference of opinions. We are picking the same winner, spread a little bit different. Again, folks, I can't reiterate enough, Saturday, 3 o'clock p.m., go to TSU. If you get a pre-game ticket, uh, pre ticket, it's 12 If you go there, day of the game, it's 15 Hillsboro versus Maplewood, 3 o'clock. Cane Ridge versus Pearl Cone, 5.30. It's the Coaches Against Violence Classic. It's a great cause. Four great net, uh, Nashville programs. Go there, support Metro. Uh, and, see, and more importantly, you're going to see great football for week one. The four arguably four of the best or four of the five best teams from Metro Nashville are going to be there playing in in this classic. It's going to be a great night. I will be there um, and, and just go and, and spend the day there at TSU. That does it for this week's show. Thanks for joining us. I have one more quick question. Are you spending Thanksgiving eating dinner with the Grimes family? Is that I am not going to spend Thanksgiving with the Grimes. I need to talk to Reggie, but uh, I think I'm with my in-laws. So I will not be there. Uh, again, thanks for joining us watching the bootleg presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. We'll be back next week. Uh, we'll have someone filling in, either Cecil or someone else here, and we'll have a new special guest talking about week two of the high school football season. Let's play football, guys.